has God or the church benefited from you? It's, it's the question I want you to ask yourself. Has God or the church benefited from you? It's a question that I want all of us to reflect on. You see, there was a time, um, one of the things that inspired me to come into ministry is, I was telling us of Mame before we came, that I have benefited a lot from the church. Uh, if, if they say one person who has benefited a lot from the church, then I'm one of them. I have benefited a lot. Being born again, going through the church has trained me. So many things of the, so many things I know. It's the church that trained me. Hallelujah. Gave me opportunity to travel. I remember when I went to London, I didn't know anybody. But the church, the pastor didn't know me from anywhere. In fact, I just called somebody in Ghana. Look where I am. Look, uh, you see, the first day I went, it, I miscalculated the weather and the season. I thought I was supposed to go in December. So December is winter. So I won't go. I'll go in February. And then I went later part of January, going to the early of February, and I still fell into the winter. Ish. And I remember the room I, where I went to sleep. You know, I didn't know much about this. No, when we say winter, don't look at Ghana rainy season, please. Uh, you know Fiza. Those, I'm just saying, those of you who have not traveled during winter, you know Fiza. You know do Fiza. You put in your hand, you see the way it's cold. And uh-huh. that will be like three degrees. That can be like three degrees, two degrees. It will be like one to four degrees. Usually freezes are like that. Imagine it being minus five, ten, fifty. Uh, some people even get to minus thirty. And you are in it. It's called winter. <laughs> so the first day I went, where I went to sleep, I didn't know we have to put on heater. I slept in the, oh, it's not easy. The next morning, so when I called a friend in Ghana and he told me, oh, there's a church in London. I'm going to call the pastor. The pastor drove from Basingstoke. It's like from Accra to Cape Coast. That's a distance, practically. He drove from there, came to where I am. He didn't know me anywhere picked me and sent me home. And that's how I joined Harvest Chapel. And then was there, the everything, you know. And I can give countless number of things that the church has done for me. And so when I came, to, I told my wife that now it is time for us to always give. That is why some of the things I do, eh? I don't need anybody to tell me, give me pep talks. No, 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 no. Pastor Anza has never called me even one day to say, oh, Ima, I'm encouraging you. No, 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 no. He knows I don't need that. Because myself, I've experienced what God has done for me. I don't need a pep talk. You see, the church has done. So, the question is, have you benefited from God? Have you? If you have benefited from God, then it is your time to also give. You see, when we say transformation, it's not because we are also ambitious. And no, no, no. We are talking from what we have experienced and heard. You no, know, the children, the reason I say children, we should do instrument, we should learn instrument. When I was going, what I was, my father had his own church. What brought me to Methodist church was instruments and boys and girls brigade. When my father saw that I was into it, he said, then go there. You, you get what I'm saying? And so when we are doing that, we want to shape vision. Look, it, assuming I was, there was no church, by this time I will be somewhere. Some of you would have been Muslims. And when I look at some of you, you would have been staunch, serious Muslims. <laughs> or Buddhists, you will be chanting by now. You see, so the early church invested their lives and their resources to make it possible for us to sit here today. They invested their lives and resources. You know, in the 
the, the missionaries who came to Ghana, they came with their coffins. They sent them. I, in fact, how many of you have seen a missionary before? Practically, you've had an encounter with mission. I'm not talking about pastors. Missionaries who are on the field doing mission. Have you seen some people? No, they are still here. There are some of them. Why? Look, I, have, I know a missionary. I've gone on missions. So one of the institutions I went with mission on was Wycliffe. We went to sleep two months. You go to, maybe they took to Volta region. They will take you to, uh, what do you call it, north and all that. When I finished my master's, I signed up again. So I stayed in London a bit to do missionary work. And I tell you, when you miss the missionary, it's not easy. But listen, I know a white missionary who is in Ghana. He was posted to the north. And that is where he stayed and the wife. When you meet the children, they are Americans. When you meet the children, they speak Dagbani. And they are English, eh? Their English is like a northerner speaking English. And when they speak, you see that they have sacrificed a lot. But you can hear from the English of their children that they gave everything, left their comfort, and went deep, deep in the northern region to win souls for Christ. You see, when, when we say God's work and you don't understand it, that is when uh, you, uh, you know, you do your own. We need to encourage you. We need to clap for you. We need to push you before you come. Oh, why not? I'm not coming. You know, and then we give you some motivational speech. Uh -huh. But when you get to experience what God has done for you, you wouldn't need that. Hallelujah. How many of you agree with what I'm saying? Romans 10 verse 14. So 14 to 15, he said, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And he's talking about those that are not saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? So he's giving you the steps. First, they must believe. But how would they believe? If they don't hear you see and then how would they hear if somebody is not sent if you don't build a church where will people get uh, people get a place to, to to worship no if we don't send pastors it is it is the church that when it comes to funding church we have an attitude to be honest Kamal Tabel, Kamal Tabel was preaching about when it comes to praises we don't have problem when it comes to prayer we don't have problem when it comes to it. but when it comes to giving we have problem it is the devil's trick because if people could fund football we have something we call in in uh, psychology target physician i don't know whether you heard that they can in marketing it's also is done you put a pro and, and then you fix when you are driving you f you focus your eye on one tail of the light you focus on it intensively all the part of the car can diminish and you can hit the car so in marketing they will let you they will put the product before you you focus on it they will do things for you to focus and then it gains importance how can football gains in, gain important than church no I, I, have you have you thought of it football that we are chasing a rubber something they are more richer. You see, look, these things are not... The devil has so many tricks. When, when those of you who have not gone to uh, uh, West London to go and watch football, look, my mates, they will say we should put money together, 150 pounds. Then we're going to sit there. And they buy season, season tickets. So... The, the devil, that's what the Bible says, fix your eye on Jesus. He's talking about target physician. The altar and the finisher. So when you fix your eye, every other thing loses their importance. Then Jesus gains importance. And so when the devil succeeds placing other things for you to focus on intensively, all other things lose their importance. But if you begin, we have get, gotten to a point, we have to let the church gain its importance. That is why pastoring should have been a full-time job. It's a profession. Why is it that we can't? Because sometimes I think of if the way I prepare myself, if the same way I do lecture, like by this time my students would have been professors. The books I have to write, is it the message the four kinds of people? I've already gotten to almost 50 pages of it. 
I can write a lot of books. I have a lot of sermons. Why? Because I have to have other things I'm doing. Let's assume I'm doing it full time, pastoring full time. I'm not talking, we, there are some pastors who are lazy, of course. That, but let's say I'm doing it full time. Do you know the books I would have written? That people would have benefited. Do you know the videos I could have done? The songs we can write. That is better than Champions League song. Even that one Christ said, him they stole. If nobody, they, if they don't hear, and if, how can they hear if nobody is sent to preach? You see, that's what he's saying. He said, how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are what? Sent. Somebody must be sent. How can they be ECG in voter region if nobody goes there? Teachers, don't they transfer them? Because if they don't do that, there won't be school there. So why, how can somebody, how would they hear, how would they believe if somebody is not, they are not told, how would they be told if somebody is not sent to tell them or somebody does not preach? And how will somebody preach if he's not sent? How can we develop our children if nothing is built for them? You see, it is in, the, it's in our decision. And he went on the verse 15 and said, how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring what? Good news. May God give you the heart to be a, a, a servant to, to his kingdom. Hallelujah. No, I didn't hear the amen. amen. All of us, including me, myself, our now and future would have been different without the church. How many of you know that? If the church had not been involved, if you had not been a Christian, practically your now, your life today, and your future will be different without the church. That's why my title is, Have You Benefited from the Church? And then, that is why we are particular about the kind of church we build. Paul said that we have to be careful what we are building. In fact, there is a scripture in the Bible that says that the church has been built on the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ being the chief cornerstone. Look, in human resource development, every organization is a human entity. It's humans that build it and they can pull it. CCC is not my calling. I have my calling. And CCC is the platform. CCC is not pastor's calling, Pastor Ansel's calling. Pastor Francois has a calling, and there's a vision God has given. He has built an organization to pursue it. How effective the organization is, is how effective the vision will be executed. Do you get what I'm saying? Every difference between entrepreneurs, that's the difference. We have a calling, and we have built organization to pursue it. So the pastor has a calling, and we have to build a system that can make that calling what? Very effective. Now, if we don't invest into it, it will never work. Have you gone to Tottenham football, the new one? None of us have been there, including myself, the new one. Very nice, though. When I, it is billions of dollars. Why? They want to execute their vision. The way their structure is built is different from Manchester because of different philosophies. You, you get what I'm saying? So God needs us to invest into the church so we can have it. Hallelujah. So if we don't build it well, our children's future will be different. Look, the way we build our church, for me, I understand that. Because when I was coming to, when pastor said I should come here, we prayed, my wife and I, we prayed for six months before it started. And one of the prayers we prayed was that, God, let us still have the prayer topics. That God, let me understand my calling and fulfill it. And one of the things in my prayer, the Holy Spirit asks me, you see, one of the best ways to get answers is questions. So the question came to me, if they give you opportunity to change the life of the congregation, what message would you preach? That was the question I was asking. Would you preach two by four message? What would you, if they are giving you opportunity to change people's life, what would you do? Now we have the opportunity to change people's life. What kind of church will we build? Apatah said. No, it's what kind of church would you build? Do you think if the same question are asked our leaders, politicians, 
What country would you build if you want to change the Ghanaian people? Like it will be one toilet, one factory. What would you do? No, that is a question you should ask yourself. If God gives you opportunity to change your children's life, what school would you take them to? What church would you take them to? What would you let them watch? It's a very important question. So as a pastor, there's that burden on us to say, okay, we want to change the lives of the congregation. What kind of church do we want to build? Hallelujah. Please, what kind of church do you want? Do you want a very powerful one? Isn't it also? Yes. Do you want a church that will transform the lives of the children? Isn't it also? How many of you agree with me? Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. So, our philosophy is shaped by the message we have heard from the beginning. That's why I'm saying that if you are not in church, your philosophy would have been different. By now, you are atheist. What do you think? You'll be believing in weird things. Look, there are people believing in things. Though. I had a Colombian, Colombian friend. She will, after lecture, she will go and enjoy and enjoy and all that. He said, oh, we had a fellowship on campus. So we'll come to the fellowship. He said, oh, and the, this world, what do I have to do? Because I have to, after everything, I will die. So why don't I chill? You see the philosophy. But you, you are here with a hope of going to heaven, isn't it also? Of a life after, isn't it also? The messages we hear, people who went to preach, change the philosophy. Look, all poor people has a, they have a philosophy. You go and ask them. Oh, you've not heard those philosophies. Say, <laughs> uh, What are some of the things they say? Oh, you've all heard some before. They are philosophies. Every poor person has a philosophy. And if you dig into the armor, you'll see the reason they are poor. You will clap, you will be shocked. You'll be shocked. The philosophy. That's why you have to be careful. What you, it is that's what shapes your face. You have to be careful the kind of philosophy you are carrying. There are people who don't even believe in excellence. So when you are going to marry, it is not people's car and house. You are checking their beliefs, philosophy. Because that is what is going to lead you. You, you see? Yeah, and that is the difference in churches, even churches. So our message, our philosophy is shaped by the message. Our faith is a relay. You were saved. Then you have to also go and save someone. It doesn't end. There is a, a song, the Asian word ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with an open heart. Oh, let the Asian world see. The, the second verse says that the word came to us through sacrifice. It came to us at the back of other people's words. Sacrifice. Somebody sacrificed. They were sold into two. They were beheaded. They were crucified upside down and all that. Just, just, just because. Have you watched a really athletics before? They struggle just to hand over the baton. And that's what happens in the faith. They will kill like a thousand people. Before, and then one will break through and give the baton to the next generation. That's how it happens. You go to Methodist, Presby, you see that's what happened. In Ghana, they were coming and they were dying of malaria. They were dying weekly. Not that they were dying in, uh, or maybe did two years and all that. They died in weeks. Some months. You ask Church of Pentecost, all of them. Then, when they were coming and died like that, uh, they were wondering, so what would we do? Then somebody said, let's, let's send a Miss Race. Uh, what do we say? How do we say it in Ghana? Half cast. Let's send a mistress. And when they send the mistress, he survived. That's why when you go to uh, uh, Ga Ga uh, Accra, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Jamestown. There's a church, they've named it about, but even Kumasi at the time, I saw Freeman Methodist Church. The Freeman, Freeman came and he was able to survive. So, generations after generation, they took a sacrifice 
and then they will make a for time and they will hand it to the next generation. Then the next generation will run with it. It is our turn. And I said that we are one of the generation we are very disappointed. If it was us that the church started, and you know, because you struggle to get people to work for God. It is, it is very, very sad. So after your salvation, you have to also go and win a soul. No one will be saved without sacrifice. An investment of resources of believers. Do you think Muslims will invest for us? Nobody will be saved if we don't invest into the church. Every Christian is called into ministry after salvation. Every Christian. Salvation is just the entry point of ministry. Let me show you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 He said, this means that, mean that anyone who belongs to Christ has become what? A new creation or a new person. The old life is gone. A new one has begun. Verse 18. And all of this is a gift from what? God, who brought us back to himself. Other versions said he reconciled us. So let me use your version. I'm reading a much simpler. The new good news. So all of these... All of all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the what, the ministry of what reconciliation. He first reconciled us, and then He gave it to go and also reconcile what. Every Christian is given that ministry, mm -hmm. but there are specific ministries like somebody is a pastor, it has a specific roles and duties. It's different, but apart from that, all of us are called into ministry. When you come born again, God called you. It's the point you entered into ministry. You have to find your role and play it well. Hallelujah. And go to the verse 19. And he said, To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the word unto him, so not imputing their trespasses on them, and has committed unto us the word. The word of the ministry, the other, the word of reconciliation, but other version put it where the ministry of reconciliation or service of reconciliation. Verse 20, he said, then we are ambassadors. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that be reconciled toward God. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be in the ministry? Please, you are in it already. Hallelujah. Okay, God is dupl duplicating his effort and excellence in, his, in the world through what? Us. He's duplicating his what? Effort. I'm trying to let you understand that what becomes of you after you are saved. When you become saved, something has started in your life. So God is duplicating his excellence. First Peter 2 9 said, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood a consecrated nation, a special people of for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellence, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfection of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. God had mercy on you. So, there is a communication value in, 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 in developing values. We have something we call, we benefit. What we benefit, for instance, if I, uh, I do a product, I benefit in more than two ways, a lot of ways. One, two major ways is that I benefit monetarily. You know, so when I sell something, don't I get? But when the product is good, what else do I benefit? Communication value. Don't you tell somebody. How many of you, do you know that research has shown 79% of the things we own was recommended by a friend? Try to look at your shoe and see whether it's not somebody. Who <laughs> recall? Your TV in your house, somebody. So oh, this TV is good, isn't also. When you wanted to buy, you asked. Oh, what should I buy? What should I do this? Isn't also? Please, how many of you understand what I'm saying? How many of you are here that most of the things, you, the women even now worse. When they see the hairstyle, this is what I want. They are waiting for somebody. Oh, this is what I want. Is it not true? Oh, the women. Uh, they are looking elsewhere. <laughs> is it not true? Yes. So, now this is the point. The heart of a true Christian is to get to others to experience what they are experiencing. If we want to know whether you are a true Christian in heart, 
if you are not sharing your experience to other people, then you truly didn't experience it. Please, when you bought your TV, it was, didn't you tell somebody? When you had your car, it was good, didn't you tell somebody? Why is it that you are not telling people about your faith? Which means you are not experiencing it. If the whole of this year, if you have not told anybody about Christ, then you have you forgotten, like the Bible said that they look into the mirror and they forget their image. You've forgotten those who forget. Somebody wrote a book. Those who forget. <laughs> so you've forgotten. John 4, 27 to 28. He said, just then, John 4, 27 to 28. He said, just then his disciples came and they were surprised to find him talking with a woman. However, no one said, what are you asking about? Or why are you talking to her? Then the woman left her jar and went into the city, began telling the people, come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. Can this be the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed? So the people left the city and were coming to him. Have you told somebody about your faith? Okay. There's a point. There's more powerful one coming. You wait. It's coming. Psalm 65, as I move on, there are three groups of people you find in this church. Psalm 66, verse 5. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of God. David is inviting. He's inviting people. Come, 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 come. The other time we went for an evangelism somewhere at the train station. And then when they were there, they, they were not sharing the thing. No, I came late from lectures. So I came late. When I came, they were standing at the entrance of the train station. And it's like they were, they were shy. So when I took the thing and entered and I was sharing, the pastor said, hey, they let me say, hey, there you've not understood what Christ has done. If you know what Christ has done for you, if you have a product that is good, do you feel shy telling somebody? If the person doesn't use it, you who loses or the person who loses? You are telling the person how good the thing is. Is it not so? So if we say, let's go for outreach, many people don't come. Because they've not experienced God. Hey, you were going to hell. Now the line, so Jamana 101, No, you should have, you should think about these things. God delivered you and you can't tell somebody that be saved, come to Christ. No, the other time uh, when uh, uh, evangelist Rich Raymond came here, he was telling you about the things we were doing at UCC. They would come to my room, we project the thing. It wasn't easy. We would come, we would knock because Christ, look, when we were sitting in the car with you, we sit in a car with you no know, evangelism for spiritual laws. We'll tell you right now. But because he has done a lot for me, where I was going, and Christ saved me. I when I'm doing something for church is different. Hallelujah. God is showing his nature through us. Okay. Your talent, energy, and time resources must benefit the church. Your what? Say your talent. Your time resources must benefit the church some of you you are very good you are accountant you are this very good you don't use it for church god doesn't benefit from your skill you have acquired the talent you have do you know how the world the the secular world has benefited from shatawale's talent no, oh, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Some of you can play football, but you never organize one for us to go and win souls. And you, and the, the annoying thing is that they will, they are proud of it. For me, 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 an engineer. For so many dinos. How has the church? Say with me, has the church benefited from me? Oh, let's say it has the church benefited from me. Hallelujah. Every talent God wanted. Your skill. Why do you think God sent Moses to Pharaoh? He wanted to benefit. You know the four books? Moses wrote it. Paul. Paul did more than Peter because he could speak more than five languages. 
Look. I was watching a documentary. He could speak four or five languages. Look. The one who wrote the book of Luke and Art. Stephen. No, he was a doctor. Luke was a doctor. Stephen. When he gave the account, he could speak six languages. He gave the account from Genesis. That's why they stoned him. They were intelligent. The intelligent among the disciples did more. Paul wrote three-fourths of the books in the New Testament. Why? He was a lawyer. He was very intelligent. Oh, they are shut them. Sorry, I'm quiet. Look, you I'm showing you. Look, those things are dangerous. God wants your talent, He wants your time, He wants your energy. Invest that into the church and you'll see the benefit. Do you get what I'm saying? If Paul, let's assume Paul said, oh, you know, we are professional Christians. When I say professional Christians, they come to church and they are quiet. You know, me, I'm professional with my coat. No, 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 no. Who best can speak to intellectuals and not all our intellectuals? When they were going to space, that people were criticizing Kennedy. They said, oh, we don't have money. Why are you doing that? People are poor. Do you know, he realized that if he followed these people, he will not go. So he started speaking to the knowledge workers. He said, you people are knowledge workers. You have to protect the knowledge because they wanted information. Who can protect the church but not outsiders? If you don't use your talent and in it, some of you are good cooks. Use it for church. We have serving team. The people who are there are not cooks. They are not having a restaurant. They are not in cooking business. It's only the church. You find accountants with the students sitting in the church and a tomato seller is the accountant in the church. No, it is true. We may have gone to so many churches. You go and see the, fi the finance department. It's a tomato seller. So the kind can then the accountant is wearing suits and sitting in the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 12. He said, therefore, seeing that you are ambitious for spiritual gifts, seek to excel in them so as to benefit the church. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 12. He says, seeing that you are ambitious for spiritual gifts, seek to excel in them so as the church will benefit from it. Always thank God for the church. I wrote here, always thank God for the church and leadership who gives you opportunity to serve God. I'm always grateful Pastor Hansberg gave me the opportunity to be a pastor. That he didn't, I didn't go and use my talent elsewhere. Hallelujah. And you have to connect. This is where I'm concluding. You have to connect your vision to the church vision. So there are three groups of people we find in church. This is very important part. I want you to listen. Three groups of people we find in church. And I'm going to show you. And this, please listen to it carefully. I want you to be the third person. The third group of people. Number one. Those who do not expect anything from God. They don't expect great things from God. They just come to church. You see, they don't have expectation. But that, that number is small. Those who come to church, they don't know what they should ask God. And in fact, if, if we do, for that one, African Christians are many. Because when you, you meet an African Christian, you say, what do God want to do for you? He doesn't know. Uh, please, do you all know what you want God to do for you? He has no door to Africa. You know, sometimes I ask people, how much do you want to be paid in a month? If you want, you want to say 600 cities. 500 cities. That's it. Is that all you ask God? There are people in church like that. But that is God wants you to have expectation. Hallelujah. He said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. God wants you to believe him for something. Yes. And there is a second group of people. Those who have ambition for themselves. And no ambition for God. They ask God to give them something or ask for forgiveness of sins. Give me, God, forgive me, I'll give me. Forgive. When you go to prayer meetings, a lot of the prayer meetings, that's how they are. People have ambition. They have, I want to build a house. I want to buy a jet. I want to do this. I want to have this. God, give me this number of this. Give me this. How many of you have ambition for yourself? Please, I'm not saying this. I'm not criticizing you. Why are you not, all of us are not raising your hand? I hope you all have an ambition. 
I'm not saying it's wrong. I've said first that you should have the ambition. But there are Christians in church, they have ambition. Hey, guy, one. He said, you want to build a house for yourself. You want to do this, but you, the house of God is in ruin. It is being destroyed. So there are those Christians, and I can tell you majority of Christians. If you ask them, what is your ambition for God? They don't have one. No. When I discovered that my, my 10 years plan I did in 20, 20, 2009, because when we were entering 2010, I did a 10 years plan and clearly stated spiritual ambition. You should have clear stated. I said, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. Some of you don't have any ambition for God. But if you don't have a vision for God, it is wrong. How many of you want to have a vision for God? And that is why we want to. Be, do something. You are believing God for money, but you are not believing God for money for God. You want money for yourself, but you are not. So, what are you crying about? I asked the question. The people who have ambition and they don't have ambition for God, they always cry. The, the cry of most Christians is about what they need and not about the kingdom. If the church does not grow, it's not their concern. Those who have ambition, they do have ambition about the church. If the church is not growing, they don't have a, it's not their concern. If the church needs money, it's not their concern. If souls are not won, it's not their concern. But the church is the concern of God. It's the need of him. It's his need. The church. The third group of people, those who are expecting God to do great things in their life and also have very big ambition from God. We might, really, I'm carried. He said, have, attempt great things for God. And expect great things from what? Him. He is the father of modern mission. In fact, his schools he built is now used to train missionaries. We want you to have, and isn't this as I tell you, I want you to go higher in your career. Believe God for it. For me, I want to develop global businesses. It's ambition. I have it. But I also have very big ambition for God. Like the work we are doing, I'm not thinking of Penya Church, you. No, I'm thinking of big things. I have big ambition for God. And I have big ambition for myself. You see, that's what William Carey is saying. Attempt great things for God and expect what? Great things from him. Any miracle you have seen in the scripture, they were required to do something for God. The woman that there was a famine, when Elijah God said, give me something to eat first. And when he gave, he began to get multiplication now, why do God want you to have ambition for him? So your success, your success is incomplete if you have not achieved something for the kingdom. Your success is incomplete. Your success on this earth must be directly proportional with your, the success of the kingdom. If you're, you are more successful than the kingdom, then there is something wrong. The early success fades are or are, in, are corruptible, but the success of the kingdom is incorruptible. Say that success of this earth is, in, is corruptible. Okay, so let's see these scriptures and let me do, do with this. This is so, First Timothy four verse eight, very fast. He said, "Physical exercise." The good news says, "Physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is valuable in all what ways because it promises life both for the present." And the future, what does the kingdom say? For godly exercise profit little. But godly, godliness is what? Profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that is now and the life that is what? Which is to come. Now this is the secret. Brothers and sisters, anything you do for the church holds a value after your life. Anything you do for yourself holds values here. How many of you have traveled to Europe? It is in Europe. What I'm going to say is in Europe. How many of you have traveled to Europe before? Or how many of you have seen Europe on TV? Britain and all that. Look, let me tell you something. If you go to Europe, all Spain, Italy, England, everywhere, Paris, you see statues. Big, big statues. Of people who have done something for their country. But the children of that generation do not even know them. They don't know who they are. 
But God, anything you do for the church, your penny, God will remember it even when he comes. And I'm, I'm, it's in Gal go to Galatians 6. 6 verse 8. Galatians 6. But first, let's look at Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. He said, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So he's saying that store your A in heaven. He sometimes I'm in a car and the car fall to come. And then you call the, the, the mechanics to say thousand cities. He said, Is 500. 1,005. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know where this time is. It's a car part. Now, how expensive your car is. The part is also expensive. But none of them will give you value in heaven. But if you contribute for a soul to be saved, a house for it will nurture souls. And these children that sit, we see here, the people who are coming, are benefiting. Your name is written. In fact, Bible has said it clearly. He's not missing words. I'm going to show you very clear. Go to Galatians uh, 6 verse 8. No, start from verse, from, from verse 7. He said that do not be misled for what the translation I mean, do not be deceived. You cannot mock the just, justice of God. You will always have it what you want. Plant. Uh, isn't that what he said there? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also what? The verse 8. Now, this one is a precede, it precedes the, the verse 8. So look at the verse 8. He said, For that soweth to his flesh shall also what? Of the flesh reap what? Corruption. That is what he's saying. Any car you buy, any house you buy, any land you buy, it's corruptible. Now, let me tell you, as you give it Nagana law, nobody owns land. You own it after 99 years. You will change hands. And you say, I'm giving you the difference. They are different. You need to have ambition for that. But know that, prepare for your life after. And he say, you can never mock or you, Are you deceiving me? Or, that's I'm asking that. Have you benefited from the church? So, if you think that me... I'm only going to invest into my life, buy clothes, buy this, but you will never invest into church. You are deceiving yourself. You are being deceived, and you are not deceiving God. He said that you can't deceive him. But he said, but he that sold to the spirit shall reap of the what? Life what? Everlasting. Something that endures. And I wrote in my notes, some research I found out. Do you know that companies businesses, buildings, do you know they've lost their ownerships? Many of them. If they didn't lose their own, if the business didn't die, then it changed hands. Do you know Coca-Cola? The one who did Coca-Cola started as a farm, he was a pharmacist. And he started. He died before the, even the business could even have opportunity to grow. Then a young boy who was working with him took over and then also sent it out, did every, a lot of things. And he also sold the company. And then it went on. Now Warren Buffett owns the majority shares. You see the way it has changed hands. Do you know who, invent, who did the Coca-Cola? You don't know. But heaven, he won't be forgotten. Say, so God is not a man to forget your labor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.